Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie and my boy Jack. What's what going up, on? What up? And we just finished watching the press conference of Robert Sala, our brand new head coach. And in this video, we want to give you guys some of our takeaways, breaking it down, what we really took from it the most, and what Jets fans can expect from our brand new head coach. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'm very close to hitting 5,000 subscribers and that accolade is crazy. So if you guys are not subscribed, please make sure you do so. And if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you thumbs it up. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. So we got a lot of news from this. We got the news that we got a defensive coordinator that's gonna be calling the plays and Jeff Ulrich, who basically means Robert Sala will not be calling the defensive plays and he's gonna be that CEO type of coach that we've been preaching for and we got a lot of news that we're going to talk about in this video So Jack, what was your first overall? Um, Takeaway from Robert Sala and his presence <clears throat> there answering to the New York media for the first time I mean all gas no breaks, baby I mean uh, he made that very clear right away He said get used to the mantra all gas no breaks and I love it That's the type of guy he clearly is that's clearly why he was hired because of the winning culture that he can help uh, establish in New York, which we're desperately in need of as a fan base. Um, and you know what? I think I think he nailed it. I think he was asked some tricky questions. Obviously, we all knew the the Darnold questions were coming, and you know how much involvement are you going to have with the second pick and all that stuff. And I think he just did a great job of giving the answers that he was supposed to give without you know obviously churning anything up too much. Obviously, there's stuff going uh, on behind the scenes that we're not going to be made aware of until everything is made official. Um, so, you know, we just got to understand that. I think he really did a great job. I really do. Uh, it got me super hyped up. Uh, I think you could tell like he was a little nervous at first, but as as a, as more time uh, elapsed, he, he got, he eased more and more into it. And I think he just did a great job. Yeah, man, we're used to, we're not used to anymore, but two years ago, we saw Adam Gase's press conference. Oh my God, night and that and was day. a nightmare. So compared to that, it is night and day, like Jack said, but let's get into the Sam Donald topic because he got asked about Sam. And his first takeaway of Sam Darnold was he was raving about him. He said he's tough as nails. We were preparing for him early on in the year in 2020. And he has a good presence to him to escape the pocket. So obviously, he's very high on Sam Darnold as a quarterback. And then a follow-up question, of course, was Rich Cimini asking him, is he going to be your quarterback next year? And Robert Sala basically said, I'm not going to give you an answer right, right now. That's premature. We're going to evaluate the quarterback position just like every other position throughout the entire roster. So that right there gives you the idea that they are not committed to Sam Donald, where it's very likely that they move on from him. Well, I wouldn't say very likely, but he just opened up the door. He did not say Sam Donald's our quarterback. So he opened up the door for the Jets to move on from him, whether that's drafting Justin Fields or Zach Wilson or it's trading for Deshaun Watson. But at the same time, if the Jets decide to keep Sam Darnold, you can tell why, because Robert Sala had a high praise for him. Whether that's to boost his trade value or not, you can genuinely tell he thinks that Sam has potential in this league. But again, he definitely opened the door for moving on from Sam Darnold. So let's go on to the conversation of Robert Sala not calling defensive plays, because this is a really big deal. Everybody assumed that he was going to be the defensive mind and calling the plays for us on the defensive side of the ball. And we find out that Jeff Ulrich will be the defensive coordinator. We didn't even know this going into the press conference. He was the guy that stepped in as the interim defensive coordinator last year for the Atlanta Falcons. He has some history in the San Francisco 49ers organization as well. So he's going to be our defensive coordinator. What this tells me is Robert Sala is exactly what we wanted. He's that quote unquote CEO type of coach. We always throw around that term. And basically what a CEO type of coach means to me is you're coaching the entire squad. You're coaching the offense, the defense, the special teams. You're a leader of men, the entire team. Adam Gase was the play caller for the offense. He coached one side of the ball and it was just a recipe for disaster. There's a lot of coaches out there that don't call plays and they're successful. So this is a really good sign to me because we need a guy that can just instill confidence, instill energy on every single phase of the ball. I can already tell throughout training camp and practice, Salah will be all over the place. He's gonna be talking to the offense. He's gonna be talking to the defense. He's gonna be everywhere. I know some people when we hired him as a defensive minded coach, are like, oh, well, what are we gonna do about our offense? Like he's just a one-sided, one-dimensional coach on the defensive side of the ball. Well, this just proves that's wrong. He's not here to coach the defense. He's here to coach the New York Jets. So Jack, what's your thoughts of Robert Sala not calling the plays on the defensive side of the ball? I mean, yeah, you just hit it right in the head, man. I agree with everything you just said. I just think it it goes to show uh, what we all 
Uh, we're excited about the hire for is that he's just gonna be a leader of this entire team. He's gonna fill that CEO role that we're all looking for. And it's something that the Jets desperately needed. And I think we got him. Uh, he just seems like a very genuine person, honestly. He kept mentioning that he said, uh, everybody describes it as a business and, and I get it, but it's not. It's a commitment to a person. You know, he's committed to these players. He's committed to their well-being, both physically and mentally. He said it, all gas, no breaks in terms of rehabilitation, how we hit the practice field, how we go to bed and wake up in the morning. You know, he's he's fully committed to this uh, to these players and uh, and the staff around him as well. He said um, that it's it's almost the same commitment as you gotta. He said it is the same commitment that you have to give to your children. He said it's it's like so he's that serious about it. He uh, he's uh, he just seems like a very genuine guy who's gonna really uh, take charge of this whole organization and uh, that doesn't make me worried at all about the. Uh, about him not calling the defensive plays because if he has full confidence uh, in Jeff Ulbrich, who looks like a savage, <laughs> um, then then you know I, I then we should as well because he uh, he totally just instilled in me at least and I hope in all of you everything that we were excited for when we heard about the hire today. He just uh, he hit the nail right on the head. He really showed us who he is as a guy and not just a coach but as a person. And uh, I'm just excited for him to uh, to have the reins moving forward. I really am. Yeah, man, we're going to need Jeff Ulbrich to shave his head so we can have the yeah. bald guys all coaching the squad because that's going to be funny. But, uh, yeah, another thing I took away that I'm just going to piggyback what Jack said is I love how Robert Sala really has a, a feeling to connect to his players off the field. You need to connect to them more as a human being, and that's the complete opposite of what Adam Gase tried to do. Adam Gase felt like he had no relationship with his guys, and that's not how you do it. And I love when he got asked, which coach really gave you – which coach do you model your your game after? Like, which coach mentored you the most and you think you're going to be the most about? And he gave a good answer. I'm not going to be anybody. I'm going to be myself. But he definitely kept talking about his time in Seattle with Pete Carroll. And I, Pete Carroll has always been my favorite coach in the NFL, outside the Jets, obviously. And I always loved the Seahawks organization before the trade of Jamal Adams. I always loved Russell Wilson. I loved Pete Carroll. When I was growing up, I rooted for them because I just loved Pete Carroll's energy and enthusiasm. And I love that he was there during the Super Bowl run. He mentioned, he's like, yeah, we won a Super Bowl at MetLife Stadium. I was here at MetLife winning a Super Bowl with Seattle. So I love how he compared him to Pete Carroll, but at the same time, he said, I'm going to be myself. And I love how Pete Carroll's enthusiasm, and you can tell that he's genuine. He cares about each player's identity. And that's what Salah is going to bring to this Jets organization. It's, it's, it's so much about the humanism aspect to it you need to connect to your players on a spiritual level more than football because that's when the players are going to really want to dial in and like do, put their heart out there on the field for their coach you want the players to just do everything in their power to win for their coach and that's what Salah's going to do he's like laying out a blueprint He's going to get in the building whenever we start going to OTAs and all that crazy stuff. He's going to probably get into every single brain of our players and just get to know them. And there's so many people talking about Robert Sala, how, how he on the sideline looks like an energizer bunny. He's enthusiastic. He's crazy. He's just so passionate. But then people say like, well, listen, you don't know Robert Sala on the other side of things when he's in the building. He's an intellect. He's extremely intelligent. His knowledge for the game is outmatched. He connects to human beings on another level. And that's exactly what this Jets coaching uh, staff needs for the guy to be the leader of the men. And I'm so excited. Um, another thing that we should mention that came out of this is the structural change. So for those guys that are not aware of what that means, previously the structural was Christopher Johnson was at the top, the owners, and then it would be Joe Douglas and the head coach. They both report to the ownership. Now it's changing. So Robert Sala will be reporting to Joe Douglas. Joe Douglas will be reporting to the ownership. So that's a big change. I don't think it's going to be a, a big uh difference in the entire organization. Christopher Johnson said that he doesn't expect that to be the case, but it definitely is because Robert Sala is essentially working for Joe Douglas. And basically what that means is this is Joe Douglas's squad in terms of personnel. But at the same time, they did mention that it's going to be collaborative effort when it goes to drafting and free agency. Salah and his uh, coaching staff is going to give them the scheme and say, I think these players fit well with this. And it's going to be a whole collaborative effort in terms of Joe Douglas and Salah getting the right guys. And he just answered all the right questions. So what, what was your take on that whole stru structural change and how, how do you think Joe Douglas and Robert Sala will really mesh together? Do you think it's like a match made in heaven? 
Well, I mean, I think the connection is certainly there. I mean, Robert Sala said it himself. He said that he, he felt like he was hanging out with his buddies by the time he left uh, the Jets building, and he said it felt like home. One thing I also feel like we should mention is that, is that Christopher Johnson said that Woody Johnson, his older brother, is uh, on a plane coming back to the States right now, and that he uh, he will be taking over as chairman again. Uh, and he, Christopher Johnson did say that the final decisions will be made by Woody, um, and that Christopher Johnson will be vice chairman now. He did say he will still be uh, heavily involved in the organization. We don't really know what that means. We have to take everything with a grain of salt, but I just felt that that should be mentioned, that Woody will be taking over for Christopher Johnson. But yeah, going back to the whole uh, Joe Douglas uh, Sala connection, it's gotta be there, man, because because that's that, that's what this organi organization needs. And as of right now, it looks like it is there because uh, Robert Sala kept praising uh, the uh, the camaraderie and um, you know how it's gonna it's gonna take working together to get this done and he kept praising Joe Douglas and Joe Douglas's staff um, for for being able to uh, to work together with uh, with one another and uh, I just I, I think that they are gonna be able to to get it done together I mean I really hope so man but it sure seems like the connection is there uh, another thing that I feel like we should mention is that um you guys might know by now or if you don't know I'll tell you quick Robert Sala uh, his brother had a very scary encounter on September 11th, uh, where he he uh, Robert Sala didn't know whether his brother survived or not for almost eight hours. I heard, um, and uh, he ended up surviving. Robert Sala was working a, a desk job in finance at the time. He realized, hey, life is short. You never know what's going to happen. Football is my passion. I got to get back into it. And then he did mention that uh, the first game of the season is the day after the 20th anniversary of the September 11th tragedy. And he did say that uh, it feels like I'm, I'm supposed to be here and I do believe that. So I just feel like that's something that should have been mentioned as well that Robert Sala really feels like New York is home for him. And uh, I think that he'll be able to, to be productive and, and return us to some competitive winning football. Uh, with the connection uh, to Joe Douglas as well. And who knows, I think I think we can all agree that although they both kind of stink, I think we all know that Woody is at least more competent than Christopher Johnson, would you agree? We'll see, man. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean Christopher Johnson did hire Gase, so who knows? But to finish off the video, I just wanna say one more thing. I love when Sala was asked, why'd you choose the Jets over everybody else? Because he was a hot candidate, he was interviewed by everybody. And what he said was, when he walked into the building, and he talked to Christopher Johnson and Joe Douglas, he felt a sense of family. He felt a sense of camaraderie. And that's really tells you that what we have brewing with Joe Douglas is something special. They have a very good synergy aspect to the things where they all have the same mindset. They have a clear vision of how they want to format this organization to win championships. That's the ultimate goal. And Salah's vision literally aligned with everybody in the building. And that's a huge sign. And Salah left that left the interview which was a long time and he said like that was home like i was just with my family it felt like so genuine i didn't have to be uncomfortable i was just myself and they accepted me and that really gives that should give jets fans really good sense of comfort that this guy feels that comfortable after meeting joe douglas christopher johnson everybody in the building for the first time he felt like they were family and that's what we need they need to be collaborative they needed to be a healthy environment in making these decisions because there's a lot of crazy decisions that will be throughout this offseason whether it's free agency the quarterback the draft trades there's going to be a lot of things and there's going to be people butting heads disagreements so i love that that that's what i got from it that Salah really connected to them on another level like he really compared it to family which was pretty crazy so that does it for our takeaways of robert Salah's press conference if you guys enjoyed please make sure you hit that thumbs up button comment down below some of your takeaways what did you take away from robert Salah the most what did he say that gave you confidence that he was the right man for the job and yeah, check us out on Twitter, Jack underscore NY Jets, NY Jets Media. You guys know where to find us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and stay tuned for more Jets content. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out, guys. Peace out. Let's go Jets. Let's go.